Normally for this part of the video, I like to be sitting out on the range with the camera in close-up mode, showing you guys the intricacies of what it is I'm evaluating that day. But uh, today it's 40 degrees and raining outside, so uh, nope on that. Today we're going to do it indoors. And what we're talking about today is AR piston rifles versus DI guns. I know that there's a fair amount of debate on whether those terms actually apply, but for today we're just going to roll with it. And for that, we're going to be using this. This is a Adams Arms Complete Upper. Adams Arms sent this here for testing. I would say that on first glance, if you were to look at this, this is as close as you can get to a standard AR and still have it be a piston gun. In fact, I would say that if you didn't know what Adams Arms does, right, and you saw this attached to a regular rifle, you would assume that it's a standard AR because it's, it's somewhat innocuous unless you get really close in. And instead of having a gas tube that takes the gas off of the barrel and runs the hot gas back to the guts, uh, filling the chamber with gunk and stuff like that, this has a metal rod that runs back. So all the pressure happens up here and then the rod runs back versus building the pressure, pushing the pressure back and pushing back here. So there's the ins and outs of how piston guns work. This one is interesting in that it is basically adapted all of the normal AR stuff, but it has crammed a piston underneath of this, what I would say, standard AR rail. And as far as the upper is concerned, the rail is monolith. Uh, it looks really nice. It's got three-sided M-lock. It's got a lot of lightning cuts. Of course, we have our properly reliefed, uh, QD points here. I do appreciate that. A lot of times you see companies put them back here and that substantially limits the amount of real estate that you have because of the thickness of the rail and the barrel nut. So moving it a little bit farther forward is the way that I like to see it. It's a one in seven twist 556 five, NATO chambering. That said, uh, why would you want to go with something like this over a standard DI gun? Well, quite simply, dirt. Uh, these guns run substantially cleaner than your normal DI gun, and we'll have a demo for that here in a bit. But the way this, this thing is, works is you can see there's a spring in there on the piston. And if I were to take this out, uh, Radian Raptor charging handle, by the way, you can see that there is no gas key on that. The piston hits that part of the carrier and pushes it back. And there is a spring up here that causes it to return. So it doesn't just sit in the back and wait for the carrier to return the piston. Some of your lower grade ones will just rely on the recoil assembly to return your piston forward as the carrier runs forward. We want independent control of that because that keeps the gun from having any uh, functionality problems, or at least it mitigates the functionality problems that can result from things locking up and of like. Now, as far as adjustability, there is a port right here that you basically reach down in with a screwdriver and twist it, and that will allow you to adjust that gas setting, fine tune it for whatever ammunition that you're using, or if you've got some uh, different muzzle equipment on there that perhaps uh, quiets things down. And then there's a set screw in there that you can then twist down after you've reached your desired setting. Now we're going to head out to the range and we're going to see, well, does it run cleaner or not? And we're going to start out with a DI gun, like a normal AR style rifle. I'm going to take the action, I'm going to press it up against the piece of paper. And if we get a malfunction, keep in mind that it's going to be pressed up against the barrier. So it's probably the ejecting brass hitting the cardboard, bouncing back in. But what we're trying to do is get an idea of how much gunk comes out of the action on a standard AR of comparable length. And now for the Adam's Arms. Indeed, indeed, runs cleaner. As we would expect, we've, we've moved the vent point from back here to up here. So the only source of powder residue and powder burn products that could end up in the action come directly from the breach, right? 
the term is you, that you don't crap where you eat because it feeds the ammo from here and then it, you get what I'm saying. From my time testing it, I showed up with it on the wrong gas setting and I didn't bring any tools with me uh, as one does. And I found out that even with my big sausage fingers, I'm able to get it in these huge lightning cuts here and push on that. So if you absolutely had to, if you forgot your screwdriver or whatever, then you can make the adjustments uh, without tools. It just might have a little angst attached to it. That said, that brings me up to my really only critique that I have of this whole setup, and that is at the gas adjustment there. Uh, while I appreciate the ability to lock down that gas setting with a set screw, I find that this set screw is pretty tiny. I, I think it's ne uh, necessary that it is that tiny because of where how the gas adjustment detents are situated on the front of the block. I understand why it was done that way. It's just that in my preference, I would prefer that little tiny set screw to be at roughly twice the size that it is, simply because little tiny threaded pieces in major operating components have a tendency to rattle themselves loose. Now that is not something that I saw over the several hundred rounds that we shot through this in testing, but I'm just saying that if they were looking for an area of continuous improvement, then that is where I would attack because this thing functioned flawlessly with a variety of different ammunition. And uh, that is the thing that I would also say is I would have to do a ton of shooting to give you a differentiation on whether a piston gun is more reliable than a direct impingement gun. I think the technology has converged to the point where they are roughly equivalent. So if you're going after for a supremely reliable gun and something that burns cleaner, then you might consider going after a piston driven system like this. And what adds to that reliability is that not only has Adam's Arms installed a gas block on this thing that has the two set screws that are detented into the barrel itself, but it also has a cross pin through their system. You see some companies that have like these bolt-on kits that clamp onto the barrel and stuff like that. This thing is made rock solid, and I am actually pretty impressed with how Adam's Arms has put this thing together. So anyway, that is my quick synopsis on piston guns. What are they good for? I feel like there's a theme song for that. And hopefully we'll see you on another video here at the VSO Gun Channel in pretty short order.